Hello, um, I'm Tom. I'm Ungdoms of Aiden Aiken. I'm working in Norway and I learn Norsk, but I'm not perfect. So I'm going to talk now in English. Today I wanted to talk about a character in the Bible called Naaman. He was a, an officer, an army officer, a successful one in the Assyrian army. Now these were enemies of Israel about 2,500 years ago. And actually he'd been, he'd got his success by attacking Israel. Um, he had a slave girl and she was a Hebrew, she was Israeli. And um, uh, there was one thing wrong with his life, with his perfect life. And he was a spedalsk, he was a leper. So he had a disease which um, ate uh, his skin and destroyed his nerves. Um, and at the time this was a bit like possibly a disease like HIV, like AIDS today, people would want to avoid you because they didn't know if they could catch it. Um, and, uh, but this was a dark time for Israel and the story is about Naaman, um, but it's also about not just Israel, but Israel's God. And the strange thing is he's an enemy of Israel, but we learn from the story that his Israeli slave encourages him to go to a prophet in Israel to be healed, which seems strange to many people because your enemy is your enemy. Um, and God uses that. Um, and he comes to Israel and there's misunderstandings in the story. I think it would be good if you read it. It's in Andre uh, Kong book, Capital Fem. Um, but he gets healed. But before he does, the prophet who he expected was a great man tells him to do something very, very easy. He says, just go and wash in the, jo in the Jordan River in Israel. I suspect that many tourists to Israel today will do the same. They will go and wash in the Jordan River or be baptised possibly. Um, but he's a bit upset by this. Uh, he says, well, there's cleaner rivers in my own country in Syria. Why should I wash in this little stream? And um, it was then that one of his servants says something that's very wise. He says, if the prophet of Israel had asked you to do something difficult, like climb a mountain uh, or run around Bergen or something like that, uh, you would have done it to be healed. You would have done something like a challenge because he's an army officer. He's used to meeting a challenge. Um, and so he does it. He goes and washes seven times in the River Jordan as the prophet has told him to. Uh, and his skin is completely clean. He is completely cured and he is overjoyed. Um, and one of the things we learn from this story, there's a lot of things we can learn from this story, but one of the things we learn from this story is that God does care about even the people who appear to be the enemies of the people of God. But also, the Israelites at the time, the Jewish people at the time, would have learned from that story that their real enemies weren't these people who were coming over the border. Their real enemies was actually, it was their own lack of faith in God. And God was showing them what faith really was. And I think that because um, we learn later in the story that the prophet's servant, he then ends up taking the disease of the foreigner because he doesn't trust. This, uh, this foreign military officer, Naaman, he offers money to the prophet and the prophet says very clearly, he says, you can't buy God's miracle. There's no money involved. It's God's free gift. We learn that about Jesus as well. You cannot buy it. Um, but of course, this servant decides that he will he is up for making a little bit of money. But of course, God's prophet knows, and when he returns, he is cursed with the disease which he's just healed from the foreigner, goes on the, the Israelite, the one who disobeyed, who didn't have faith. And so there's a really strong lesson there, which is that God wants to bless us. Sometimes, well, I say sometimes, perhaps it's all the time, we need to recognise that the, the problem is us. It's not necessarily a foreigner or someone else. Um, but the problem goes back to us. The other thing, the other reason I quite like this story, having come to Norway, is because a story similar to this is how Christianity first came to Norway. Uh, because as I think, um, as I'm reminded quite a lot, there was a people called the Vikings in Norway who used to go to England many years ago and they took slaves from the uh, English towns and villages and they took them back to Norway. And this was how Christianity first came to Norway. I also know that uh, a lot of people study a lot about the history of Norway now, it's a popular thing, and they find that there's some 
good things about Christianity and the history and some bad things. But I find that it's interesting is that it first came to Norway uh, through a situation a bit like this, is that po possibly a young girl who was a slave and her Viking masters were discussing something else and she was the one who said, maybe you can pray to the god of the English or, or the god of whichever tribe it was on the English coast at the time. And that was how it first came to Norway. So I'll leave you on that note. God bless. Goodbye.